Hey Bubble family, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I thought I would listen to you guys. And I have had quite a few um, emails, comments, where people have said, Ems, you don't do therapy videos so much anymore. And so I thought, you know what, you're right. I haven't done one for a while because there has been so much going on in the media. And as much as I do give my therapeutic perspective, um, it's been a while since I have done one solely on something really therapy related. But I thought, OK, I'm going to incorporate what we've been talking about in regards to Harry and Meghan and Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. So I'm going to talk about abusive relationships, what to look out for and how you can stop yourself from getting into a very, in my opinion, toxic relationship. So if you want to join me, then please, you know what to do. Grab your drink of choice, whether it's tea, coffee, milk, water, peach snaps. I'm going to add something a bit different. Peach snaps. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Gin. I haven't mentioned gin for a while. Um, 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 wine even. Wine. Because it's five o'clock somewhere. So grab that drink and let's dive right in. So, Bubbles, welcome back. So, I have heard you and I'm listening and I'm going to talk about it. So, it feels very fitting after the, the things that have come out in the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial and obviously what we have witnessed or kind of what we've gleaned from kind of body language behind the scenes in regards to Harry and Meghan's relationship. It seems very fitting to talk about abusive relationships. Now this video will be a little bit longer so I apologise if you do not like longer videos. What I would suggest is maybe you watch as much as you can you can manage and then stop it and come back to the other half later on. So abusive relationships. Now, one of the things, in fact, I probably say it's one of the common things that I am asked, um, either whether it be on this channel or whether it be in my clients, is how do you know? How do you know you're in an abusive relationship? How do you know what to look out for to stop yourself from getting into that abusive relationship? Well, here's the thing. Your brain is hardwired to not have something become hard work you know so for example when something appears fearful and you have that reaction you will walk away from that or you'll step back from that or you won't go further because you're kind of like yeah I'm getting this reaction I don't like it so actually I'm not going to do that so what a lot of people don't do is they don't trust their gut instinct um, and this is part of a part of your brain which is called the limbic brain which is also another word is the mammalian brain mammalian brain let's get that wrong <laughs> mammalian mammalian brain um this this predates back to about 250 million years ago and what this was was back before kind of even words were kind of necessarily formed a lot of people relied on body language they relied on kind of the things that they see um, and this accesses something in their brain that tells them that something isn't right. And, and the reason why it's called that is because animals rely on this kind of part of the brain. You know, obviously animals cannot talk, but they get a sense. You know, have you ever seen like a deer that, you know, if you're walking in the forest, the deer suddenly looks up, it's kind of preempting this possible danger and it runs off. It's this, this kind of concept. It's trusting its instincts that something isn't right and it runs and it flees. It's the same kind of principle with the fight or flight uh, kind of synopsis. So this part of your brain is accessing gut instinct. But if you don't know yourself, there is every chance that you will second guess that gut instinct because it's very quick. You know, it's very instant. It's that part of you that kind of senses something isn't right and then kind of goes, mm, is it or isn't it? You know, you then you're, you're kind of then the conscious brain kicks in and it's kind of like, OK, I'm going to question that, you know, and this is why you will sometimes second guess yourself. 
So you get that instant, this doesn't feel right. And then you will get that part of your brain that kind of goes, yeah, but you know, maybe you're reacting here. Maybe you're overreacting. But anyway, in this video, you, I'm going to kind of say to you, you know, I want you to look at this part of yourself. Do you trust your instincts? So what will happen in abusive relationships, for example, if we look at, I mean, the two celebrities that are constantly in the news at the moment, which is Amber Heard, Johnny Depp and Harry and Meghan, um, you're going to look at the fact that the signs are there. No matter what anyone says, when you look at any abusive relationship, when you come out of it and someone says to you, but were there signs? You can then recall back and kind of go, yeah. Now, maybe not initially in the beginning, which is when we've talked about love bombing, which is where we talk about where people mirror, which is what we've had with Harry and Meghan. And I probably believe this is probably the same with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. When they first come into a relationship and usually if it's when we're talking about women um, going into a relationship with a man here. Um, so you've got Megan, who we've spoken about at length, love bond. She come in wearing Diana's perfume. She come in pertaining to be a humanitarian. She was going. She wants to be part of the royal family. You know, she's kind of built up this this story in a way. So what's happened is that she's trauma bonded with Harry because of the whole Diana scenario. So he believes he's got another. He's got a woman that is like his mother. Now, I also think as well that he's looking for someone like who his brother has. He's looking for this kind of relationship. He wants someone that's like Catherine. You can see that the two of them were very bonded in the beginning, um, before pre Megan. Um, and I believe that it's possible that he was kind of looking for this similar type of relationship that he sees that his brother has got. So of course in comes Megan, she creates it to be this the most amazing thing, you know, I'm going to be everything that you want, I'm going to be your teammate, you know, which I've spoken about before. And the same with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Now I know that not a lot has been discussed about the early stages of the relationship, but where she slipped up is where she said initially it was magic. Now I believe this was the love bombing stage. So what I think happened is she was great. So of course, if she's great, Johnny is going to think that this is a great relationship. I've got this really young, attractive woman and she's most amazing. She's really supportive. So when she says the first year, even though she's now changed this, um, the first year was magic. I think this is because she was on her best behavior. So she was probably at a time very um, charming, very funny. People have come out and said before that she's very charming. Again, this narcissism of I'm going to love bomb you. Most narcissists do this kind of performance to draw you in, which is what she's kind of done with. Um, now, obviously, a lot of people are like, well, how, how would you know then if someone is love bombing you? How do you know? Well, it's it's not just one thing. It's a cluster. So, Generally speaking, most people, when they enter into a relationship, and I'm not saying all, but most, um, are tentative, especially at the age we are now, because we've, we've either got children or grandchildren or we've, we've come with our own baggage. And so we've possibly been hurt before. So you've got this concept of, you know, you're going to be tentative. The problem you have, if you come from your a damage that you haven't healed from, your kind of radar is going to be off kilter. So in regards to like, for example, Harry and Meghan, Harry had not healed. I do not believe, and I can't prove this obviously, but I don't believe he healed from his mother's death. I think he still holds a lot of resentment, a lot of anger. Um, I think there is possible even resentment with the fact that his brother is going to be king. Um, the fact that his brother, all, all intents and purposes, seems to have this perfect life and the way he sees it. Uh, there is possible that he thinks that perhaps his father favours um, William over Harry due to the fact that William is going to be king. Obviously, again, hearsay, <laughs> you know, but this is kind of this building blocks of kind of what has created Harry to be the person he is. He's a very angry man. You've only got to see this in his body language, the way he looks, the way he acts, the way he's now coming out speaking about his family. There is a lot of resentment and a lot of anger underneath. Um, 
And then you've got obviously Johnny Depp who has openly spoken about the fact that he's come from quite a dysfunctional family. His mother was um, quite, a, uh, quite abusive. Um, and he, so he comes from this kind of very troubled background. Um, and not only that, he's also in the in the throes of kind of drink, uh, drink drugs, uh, you know, trying to be sober, trying to be well. Um, so, of course, in comes this person who probably acts like she's going to be his saviour. It's the same with Harry. So they instead of actually stepping back and kind of going, do you know what, is this person actually compatible? Because a lot of the time, especially, and I, and I hate to say it, but it's true, especially in men, if the woman is very attractive, they will bypass whether or not they believe this person is compatible for them or not. And they will get so caught up in lust that they will kind of bypass those little signals that are happening. There would have been moments tell you now there would have been moments when even in the love bombing stage the mask would slip Megan would have lost her temper with something she would have thrown a hissy fit about something and um uh, Amber would have done exactly the same would have thrown a hissy fit about something the problem you have there is I've actually just caught a glimpse of my hair in that mirror and it looks really scruffy behind it looks like I haven't brushed it which I probably haven't that's the problem when you look at the mirror in the front you're kind of like yeah it looks okay in the front <laughs> not bothered about the back and I've just noticed it in that mirror <laughs> sorry sidestep so you have the fact that you've got these two women who probably are very sexual and I'd probably say exactly the same for Amber she probably rocked Johnny Depp's world initially um you have the fact that you probably got the same with Megan I have spoken about this before narcissists are very sexual people because they use sex as a weapon they use it as a form of manipulation um so this is kind of what they do. So in the beginning, this is what would have happened. Now, you ask yourself when you look back over if any of you have had abusive relationships and you've come out of them, which I hope you have. And I obviously, you know, if you're still in one, then, you know, if you please, you know, try and, you know, reach out and, and speak to somebody, whether it's emailing me or somebody. I appreciate that I can't always get to you straight away because I do have such a backlog of emails, but I really do try and get to everybody. Um, but there will be signs. There will be signs. There will be signs where they will be manipulating, gaslighting you. They will be creating you to feel that you're the person in the wrong or there'll be an excuse. They never take accountability for their behaviour. That is one of the huge red flags, I would say, is if somebody does not take accountability for how they behave or they don't self-check themselves. Like, for example, you hear this, uh, well, I, you know, if I react angrily, well, that's just who I am. No, it's not. It's who you're choosing to be because you can make that conscious choice to step back. If you are feeling angry, if you're feeling that you're going to react in that moment. Now, I'm not saying that we're not human and sometimes we do this, but it is very much about for the most part, if you're somebody that steps back, assesses, OK, is this me? Is this something that they are doing that is creating this to happen within me, this reaction? And it's something that I might need to talk to my partner about. Or is it that I'm actually having a bad day or something's going on for me and I'm projecting and I'm creating it to be my partner's fault? You have to be accountable for your own actions. What you're not accountable for is how your partner feels or the friend or whoever, how they feel. But you can open it up as a discussion. For example, if you react angrily because of something they have said and then they then react in anger, then it means that something's also going on for them and it opens up a discussion. OK, what is going on for the both of us here? What can we do to make sure this doesn't happen again? That is healthy. It's not about being perfect. It is about being able to communicate effectively so you can work on those issues together. But what you have, with, especially in a narcissistic relationship um, and, and possibly some other disorders um, like histrionic, which also kind of has developed from narcissism, you know, you've got sociopathy, psychopathy. These are the types of personalities that do not take responsibility for their actions in any shape or form. What they will do is they will twist it, gaslight you, create it to be your fault. Like if you hadn't have said that, I wouldn't have got angry. If you hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have hit you or I wouldn't have reacted angrily. And of course, then what can happen is, is if your radar is not on track, um, 
you can then start to think it's your fault. So if somebody, even if somebody ignores you, I'm ignoring you. Now, okay, that's not to say that you you are not allowed to go off and be silent and, and be self-reflective, but usually you would say, I can't deal this right now. I can feel myself getting angry. I'm just going to take myself off and I'm going to just, just, you know, kind of sort myself out. And then when I'm calmer, I will come back to you. Even if somebody gives you the silent treatment, that is still a form of abuse. It is. Um, now, I'm not saying that when you look at the, the trial, there's not elements of you know, if you're going to pick it apart, then, you know, even in the the way they both speak to each other, it's very toxic. Now, OK, Johnny also has to do his own self-reflection here and work on himself and the way he responds. But the difference being is also you lose respect. So what I think happens here is that when you've got somebody like Harry, like Johnny Depp, um, and I'm not excusing Harry's behaviour here, that's a different issue and I will talk about that in another video. But what you have here is that you, when you have this constant berating, constant abuse, in the beginning you start off very respectful to your partner, What you start off with this kind of, you know, the person that you are, but over time that gets so worn down that you lose all respect for them. Now here's the pinnacle point, that's when you need to walk away. When you get to that point when you've lost trust, you've lost respect, you need to walk away because the chances are that's never going to come back. But the problem you have is that when you've got somebody that is as damaged, I'm guessing, as Johnny Depp, he stayed in it. He stayed in this very toxic relationship because for some reason, either he didn't think that it was all Amber Heard's fault, he blamed himself for some of it, which, OK, fair enough. But I think what was happening is, is because of the love bombing, because it was so great in the beginning and there were periods where she was probably on form and again, come back in with the love bombing, especially if she thought she was going to lose him. He then holds on to that. And this is a common theme in relationships. You hold on to the person you had in the beginning. You think that they're going to come back. This is a blip. They're going to change. And the reason being is because they keep changing. So what they'll do is they'll be aggressive, they'll be mean, they'll be cruel. And then when they think that you are pulling away, they will reel you back in again by being nice again. They will be that person they were in the beginning. This is part of hoovering. This is part of the love bombing aspect of it. And this is because they're not done with you yet. And this is why she kept doing that. He was her meal ticket. Same with Harry, meal ticket. So all the time she needs him, all the time, uh, you know, and this is not just synonymous. I'm talking about these two particular couples. It's not just synonymous. Men do it too. There are male narcissists. But at the moment, these two are in the media, these two couples. So this is what they will do. They will keep hoovering you back in till they are done. And then you will see yourself being devalued and then you will be discarded. And that is kind of what is happening now. Now, what will also happen is if you get to a point, which is what I think Johnny Depp is at, where he's called quits, he's had enough, you then get narc revenge, which is what we're now seeing with Amber. She is exacting narc revenge. When this happens, there is nothing that she will not do, a narcissist will not do to win. And this is why you've seen her perjure herself on the stand. You've seen her lie. You've seen her make up these horrendous stories about him. Um, and this is what she's capable of. And don't think for one second that Meghan will not do the same. If they divorce, it will be a free for all. She will, do, you know, unless they can put something in where she is not allowed legally to talk about the royal family or she is not allowed to talk about Harry or things that are divulged within the relationship you know to do with the royal family um she will go on a talk show circuit and she will blab to her heart's content because at this point she won't care she won't care and this is what happens when you are dealing with a narcissist if you end the relationship first they will go all out to be vengeful. They will try to turn your family, your friends against you. They will do a smear campaign, which is what we've seen now with Johnny Depp. There has been an all out smear campaign against him by her because he 
ended it first and she wasn't ready. She wasn't ready to give up that meal ticket, which is why then also I believe she then latched on to Elon Musk. I think ideally Johnny was her main meal ticket and she then needed somebody else and which is what she's done. And she's basically gone to various people to get that kind of, I need somebody, I need that narc supply. And so this is what she does. Um, and this is how, so this is how you, you know, so talking, going back to kind of how do you know, you have to know yourself. First and foremost, you have to have your boundaries. If you don't have your boundaries and it doesn't matter what they are, you have every right to put your boundaries in. If someone crosses that, then you then have a conversation with them and maybe give them one chance. But if they do it again, what that shows you is they're not respecting you and they're not hearing you. So if that's the case, walk away. You know, if you have got somebody that is going all out in the very beginning stages of a relationship where they are love bombing you, which is, means they are consistently kind of almost badgering you, but doing it in a way that they they want to spend time with you. They want to get to know you. They want to move in really quickly. Red flags, red flags. And you are allowed to take your time because believe you me, if somebody wants to be with you, if they want you in their life, they will wait. They will do whatever it takes to support your journey in, you know, because maybe you are feeling a little bit untrusted. You know, you're not sure. You know, it's OK to be sure. You know, ask questions because also a narcissist, what they will also do is they will want to know about you. They kind of do it in the guise of, you know, I'm just so enthralled by you that I kind of want to know everything about you. I need to know, you know, I never, you know, please, you know, don't lie to me. I want to know all the truth about you. But believe you me, this will be used against you. If there's any vulnerabilities, like for me, when I was younger, I suffered with bulimia. Um, I'm going to be open and honest here and congruent on the channel. When I was very young, I suffered with bulimia. And one of the things that I, because it was very private and again, not relevant, um, what he did was I had uh, some doctor's notes that were in my private, um, uh, my, my kind of private papers. And he went through the, my, my doctor's notes and he found out that I was, that I had this bout of bulimia when I was about 15. And he went mental. He went mental at me um, because he said that I'd lied to him because I hadn't told him. So this is exactly the type of thing I'm talking about. Now, obviously that was enough for me. And I was just like, yeah, I'm done. Um, and I walked away. But I hadn't been with him very long and obviously the signs were there. But, you know, this is kind of the thing they do. They they try to find your vulnerable, you know, to them it's almost like weaknesses and they will use those against you. So don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, in a way, when you're in a relationship, it's almost like an interview. You know, you're kind of like you are interviewing in a way someone that's going to be in your life, whether you've got children, grandchildren, you know, or if, even if it's just yourself. It, so it's important that you get to know who they are. Find out how they react in stressful situations. Take your time getting to know somebody before you decide to commit because you have every right to do that. Um, and that way then if you see them in every kind of aspect because the mask will slip, believe you me, if you watch. Trust your instincts. So if something doesn't feel right, believe that and then either talk to the person about it and see how they react to what you're reacting to or walk away. It is okay to walk away. doesn't matter how great looking they are, how amazing they might be in bed, um, whether they've got money, whatever your thing is that you might be interested in. If they are not going to treat you right or watch how they treat others and if they watch how they speak about their own parents, watch how they, especially if a male narcissist, he will usually have a bad relationship with the mother. Um, so, and, you know, and in a female, it can be either parents, but it's possibly usually the father. So watch how they speak about their parents. Um, you know, just watch, observe take your time and they are the biggest things I can tell you is trust your instincts, learn how to trust your instincts, take your time getting to know somebody and don't be afraid to walk away, don't be afraid to say no, you're, this isn't, you know, it's not about you, this is about me, this isn't going to work for me. Even if someone is kind of almost like just avoiding uh, you know, avoiding human communication, avoiding talking about themselves. You know, you want someone to be open and transparent. There should be nothing hidden. 
between the two of you. And again, I'm not talking about some personal things like for me with the bulimia, you know, these are things that are personal and they're not really necessary in a relationship. And some, and maybe that would have come out if I'd have trusted him. Who knows? Maybe my instincts were, were right in the fact that perhaps I didn't trust him with that part of myself. But don't be afraid to be you and ask questions. And like I say, and don't be afraid to walk away. So I hope this kind of helps you. And I know this is a little bit different in what I've spoken about before, because I know that obviously I do know that the when I talk about Harry and Meghan, those videos are very popular. When I talk about the uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp or other celebrities. Those videos are a lot more popular than my therapeutic um, videos. But it's important to me that I still keep giving you these ones for the people that might want them, for the things that might help you. So I will always, every now and again, I will still do these type of videos. Um, but, you know, I, I do recognise that the the tea is probably a little bit more exciting than these type of videos. But like I've always said, I want to help you guys and I want you to be informed. So if you have any other t therapy type videos, I know someone's asked me to do one about grief. I will do that. Um, I haven't forgotten. Um, but also as well, I just want to say that for the next four days, I am boycotting, boycotting the Dastardly Duo. I will not be, be doing anything about them. If there's something that has come up, I will do it after. So please don't ask me because this is about the Queen. This is about her service. And I want to be bringing you um, as much footage as I possibly can. Because I know a lot of you have asked me, because in America, you don't know how much of it you're going to see. So I will try and bring you whatever I can and hope that I'm not going to get done for copyright. I don't know how that really works. But I'm going to try. And even if I don't get paid for it, I'll still put it on here anyway. It doesn't matter. So I will bring you as much as I can. So in the meantime, as always, my bubbles, I love you and I appreciate you. Don't forget to like this video. Um, and if you like my channel, please subscribe um, because, um, well, it doesn't cost you anything to do that. And it really does help my algorithm and it kind of shares my videos. Um, and yeah, and in the meantime, have a wonderful weekend with this Platinum Jubilee. And tomorrow, my video is going to be slightly royal. Um, and I will, I'll speak to you then. So take care, my lovelies, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.